Hey everyone, it's Damon with Living in the OC. How's everyone doing? Just wanted to uh, have a couple of thoughts after the Labor Day weekend. I'm heading back from uh, our family cabin up by Yosemite, driving back down to Orange County. I left at about 11.30 in the morning and here I am five hours later. And this brings me to one of my points why would anyone want to deal with the traffic here in Southern California? Traffic can be absolutely horrendous. I just pulled out of downtown LA. I have 28 miles to go to get back to Floral Park. The navigation says it'll take me an hour and 15 minutes from here. And it's sort of like this in any major city now. But to get anywhere, especially during rush hour, is going to take you two hours. Two hours to get anywhere of any distance around here. It's absolutely nuts. So it's a it's a big consideration when you're thinking about moving to Southern California. Why does anyone want to move into a metropolitan area like this? When it seems like the trends are that people are moving away from the cities, especially after the pandemic, People, it seems uh, the numbers are showing that they're, everyone's moving out to the suburbs and out to more rural areas. And maybe that's why, uh, you know, the price of everything's gone up for single family homes. But inventory here in Southern California, and we talked about it on another video, is like non-existent in, uh, in this area. It's just so low, there's so many units below where they normally are with our interest rates in the sevens uh people just are sitting tight there is no incentive for them to move unless there's a death or a divorce really there or relocating for a job really there's no need for people to uh be selling at this time but anyway i just I'm going to put some thoughts together. Mom, I think, is not going to be able to join us for a video this week. Uh, she's a little down and out, but uh, hopefully she'll be back with us next week. Here we are. I'm literally 28 miles away. The navigation says that I have traffic for the next 42 minutes. And this is, I'm on, I'm currently on the five southbound. And uh, like any big city, metro, metropolitan area, it can be nasty. Accidents, just bumper to bumper gridlock, you name it. Why would people want to move to this area? The weather, first of all, unbelievable weather year round. It's currently 81 degrees in LA as we get early part of September, you know, summer's sort of wrapping up. Beautiful weather pretty much year round, although the weather has been changing. We had a ton of rain this last season, uh, kind of uncharacteristic for Southern California, but the weather is the, the main reason. And this is also the second biggest market in the country besides New York. But even in New York, I haven't spent much time there, but uh, people don't have to drive there. You, you, you pretty much take the uh, subway system to get around or take a cab. So very few people have cars in New York. So you save yourself that expense, which would be nice. People here in LA and Orange County, Southern California, people love their cars. People can basically live out of their cars. 
when you look at the average commute time and now that the pandemic's over, a lot of companies are wanting people to be back in the office. And if you have a problem with that, they have no problem letting people go now. Um, but it's just interesting. Uh, the commute times here can just be crazy, crazy, crazy. To get from downtown LA to Floral Park in the heart of Orange County, it says it takes it about 30 miles, 29, 30 miles roughly. So I have another 27 miles to go and the uh, navigation is saying it's gonna take me over an hour if I'm lucky. But it's like, welcome back to uh, Welcome back to Southern California. I literally have been driving since 1130 this morning. I've been on the road over five hours to get back here. And now I'm dealing with about two hours probably of traffic since I've come back into Southern California. I've stayed on the five freeway. A lot of the times I'll cut down the 405 and take that south and um, go past LAX and again though you know LAX can be a nightmare too there's always construction going on at LAX and it's one of the busier airports in the world so um, the 405 can be any of the freeways in Southern California can be horrendous depending on what time of day you're on the road and it seems like now and <laughs> kind of laugh about this seems like the majority it, like it, it doesn't even matter what time you're on the road anymore if if business gets out by five o'clock let's say and you say okay well you've got to be on the road by two o'clock this um it doesn't seem to make any difference in southern california there's traffic it seems at any hour of the day now like during business hours it just seems like there's traffic at all, all times now. Like you'll have a lunch rush, you have your morning commute, and then that usually doesn't clear up to like, let's say 10, 1030. Then you have the lunch hour traffic. And then maybe the one o'clock hour, it might be okay. But then by like two o'clock, it can be like gridlock bumper to bumper. So something to definitely consider. I mean, it's gotten to the point now, especially like with the price of gasoline, it was over $5 to, to, to fill the tank up for my trip today for the cheap stuff for the 87 octane. So with the price of gas, the way it is, it's, you know, it's a definite consideration. And I've got to give um, props to our buddy Keith, and I think we're going to try to interview him in the next couple of weeks. Uh, he's a big time commercial real estate uh, broker here in Los Angeles. Uh, but anyway, the reason I bring him up, uh, he has a Tesla, and I hadn't really been in a ride uh, in, a, in a Tesla, and I think he has the Model Y, I think is what he was saying. Un, uh, just unbelievably cool car. The technology was amazing. Uh, those are, uh, bear with me. I've got to cut over a lane or two here as I'm trying to talk to you guys and deal with the traffic here. Um, got to get over one more lane. Okay. And then with his uh, with his Tesla, the onboard like technology on the display was absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's almost like that self driving feature that you can have on there if you want it. It allows you to see all the cars around you with those cameras that they have. 360 around the car, you can see all of the cars that are on the road next to you really, really unbelievable uh, technology there. The torque on that thing, it was 
unbelievable. You hit the gas and I mean, your head goes jolting back. The, uh, the torque is so amazing on those electric cars now. Anyway, they, you know, they say that's the wave of the future that uh, by 2035 here in California, Gavin Newsom, the governor is trying to get everything to be electric. And I don't, you know, that's a discussion in itself. Are we going to have the in infrastructure set up to be able to handle all of the uh, electric charging that's going to need to take place? Uh, that's a certainly a, an interesting goal as uh, you know they're trying to make everything green in California so but this is um, this is just a typical this is a Tuesday it's the day after Labor Day and uh, I just thought you know as I'm coming in trying to get some thoughts on a on a video to put together. Traffic is really a big, a big part of living here. So it's something that you have to factor in. I know things have changed with work through the pandemic with people wanting to work uh, remotely and more power to them. If you don't have to go into an office every day uh, I, you know, work, the, the way people are working has definitely changed. Um, but we've definitely noticed that uh, since we've been kind of cleared from the pandemic, even though people are still getting COVID, um, the streets are back. Uh, it's, it's really, really heavy out here. It's uh, almost five o'clock rush hour time here. And uh, I'm just crawling, crawling along. So it's something, if you're thinking about Orange County, if you're thinking about LA, it, it like I mentioned earlier, it is the second largest market in the country. And it's, uh, you know, it's something that you have to factor in. I mean, I know a couple of people that, uh, will drive almost well over an hour, uh, like an hour and a half, just to get into their work on a daily basis and then have to do the same thing driving home. So you can imagine if you had to spend three hours a day of your life on the road, that's a lot of time to be away from your family, from your kids, from your spouse. So it's gotten to the point where, you know, the uh, they have to build in this technology, these cars now, where you can try to get stuff done. And I mean, I know people listen to audio books, books on tape, you know, uh, but people are having to spend so much time in their cars that it's, um, it's what all I'm saying is that it's a very, very, very big factor here. Um, they try to have carpool lanes and, and get people to carpool to work, but still I would say the majority of people, like I'm looking around right now, the majority of people are by themselves in their car single single drivers single you know just by themselves uh just inching along so i'm coming up i'm now at the five and the 710 interchange the 710 goes south toward long beach and i'm inching closer to orange county i since we've been talking now uh, I'm now 26 miles away and it says I'll arrive in 58 minutes. So again, you, you know, you've got to listen to the radio or, or iTunes or whatever just to pass the time. Cause this, 
this can be frustrating. And, you know, jokingly, like they talk about road rage and it's on the news. Like there are people, you'll see some examples on the news where people get into car chases or fights or whatever. That's another thing here. We, we, we <laughs> in Southern California, we actually have people, um, when they try to uh, evade police or the highway patrol. And I don't know how, how many other markets have this, but they'll have the, the, the person trying to elude police and they don't comply with them and try to outrun them or whatever. So you have like a, a police chase on the news. And sometimes instead of watching the regular news, you end up watching for like an hour some individual that's trying to and there's no way they're ever going to outrun the police especially when they get the helicopters on them it's it's kind of a joke but still people try to do it anyway but yeah so you know and then there's like other examples where i've seen here where people will get so mad that they've gotten an, a, out a gun and have shot at other people like just just ridiculous you know there was an example of a guy here a couple of months ago. They finally arrested him that, uh, I think he was in a Tesla too, which is even funnier, was like getting out of the car with road rage with a bat. And he was like smashing into people's cars. He would, he would park his car and get out and hit the person behind him with a baseball bat. So, I'm not telling you guys this to discourage you, but I'm just, the reality is there, there are a lot of crazy people in the world. Now, all you have to do is turn on the nightly news wherever you are to see all the craziness that's going on. But um, it like it's carried over to people driving and, and, and whatnot. And I kind of, we touched on it last week with our video about uh, there are a lot of angry people out there and there just there seems like there are a ton of angry people on the road and is it is any of it worth risking your health or your you know your, your family's depending on you and whatnot people need to just let stuff go I had an example like a few weeks back of uh, a guy that I was trying to make a lane change and he thought that I, I was trying to turn to the left and to the left lane this is in Orange County and uh, I put my signal on and there was enough room to to, to make the cha the lane change one lane over to the left ironically also on the five freeway uh, and the guy wasn't happy that I changed lanes and so he goes whipping around to the left and is waving the, his middle finger at me. Yeah, it's like, okay, pal, I put my, my turn indicator on and I made a, uh, I gave him enough time to see, maybe he just didn't see my, my blinker or something that, uh, it's like, really, you're going to allow yourself to get that upset because someone's trying to change a lane on the freeway. Really? Anyway, we've been talking now for about 20 minutes and I think I've gone about two or three miles. Says that I have 54 minutes to go now to get to my destination. So anyway, uh, everyone, um, Damon with Living in the OC. This is the reality of being in Southern California, though. Traffic. Traffic is a big, big part of living here. That has to be a consideration if you're thinking about moving here. I'm not trying to dissuade anyone. Uh, a lot of great things about living here. But uh, anyway, if you are interested and need to talk to someone about making that smooth move, 
give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We even have that ability to uh, set up the Zoom meeting on the website there. You just click on the button and you can see the schedule and you can schedule a half hour to talk to mom and me. So yeah, anyway, I just wanted you guys to kind of see and you can see behind me all the cars and everything, but this is, I think this is kind of true for any big metropolitan area now, but this is the reality of it. You know, you want to get home in one piece, but you've got to factor this in. It is a definite negative of being here. They're, 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 whoop, well, see, like, okay, now this guy in his truck is trying to cut over. I don't know what's going on. But, uh, not easy to drive and sit in traffic and try to record a video either, but this is, uh, this is the reality of, uh, of Southern California. And people love their cars here. People, and you see some of the most exotic cars in the world here. Every major exotic car you can think of, you would probably see on the road. As I showed you guys in that one video from uh, the top 10 Mexican restaurants, when we went down to Javier's, there was that Aston Martin dealer. You'll see Aston Martins on the road. You'll see Ferraris. Every once in a while, you'll see a Bugatti. People spend a lot of money on their on their vehicles here because people spend a tremendous amount of time in their cars. But yeah, it's like this is the big welcome home. You know, I, I literally have been on the road now five and a half hours. I'm still not home. I won't be home for another 50 minutes, according to the navigation. It's like after driving for four hours, my trip from our place up by Yosemite to Orange County is 300 miles altogether. And uh, it's, it's always crazy when the last leg of the trip takes you an extra two hours to go less than 50 miles. So it's a nice, always a nice welcome home. Welcome back to Southern California. Welcome back to the reality of being here. Anyway, guys, it's uh, it's Damon with uh, living in the OC. Got the new hat on, rocking the new hat. Tell all your friends and family about us. Give us a like, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And uh, we would love to be able to chat with you guys. Anyway, I could I could keep rambling on for another 20 some odd minutes if I wanted to, but I just, I just wanted you guys to understand the reality of, of if you are in fact serious about moving to Southern California, that um, depending on where you're coming from, you've probably never seen traffic, anything like this. Um, I think it is the biggest car market in the country. And we have some good drivers and we have some really bad drivers too. But it's a, it's a definite consideration. And like up north in the Central Valley up there, it's like truck country because of all the farming and everything that's done. Down here, you see all different types of cars. I mean, people have their trucks down here too. But uh, anyway, again, Damon with living in the OC.